This meeting of the Barry County Board of Commissioners is called to order. Will Commissioner, staff, and guests please rise for invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this great country, county, community that we live in. We're so thankful that we can meet here this morning. And we ask that you bless us with wisdom to make good decisions. We ask that you watch over our law enforcement. We ask that you watch over our soldiers who are home and under cross. And that you continue to guide this country and, and bless it. Wrap your arms around us and protect us. Thank you so very much again. We ask this in Jesus' name. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For the purposes of attendance, the clerk will call the roll. Campbell. Here. Connor? Here. Geiger? Here. Getty? Here. Gibson? Here. Jackson? Here. Smelker? Here. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Approval written agenda. At this time, any commissioner or member of the public may ask for an item to be removed from the consent agenda and placed under items for consideration. Hearing no such request, does any commissioner request to change the agenda additionally? Hearing no such request, and without objection, the agenda is approved as written. Reports from state and county officers. Does any state or county officer or their representative have a report to share with the board? Hearing none, we'll move ahead. Limited public comment. This time, any member of the public wishing to address the board may do so for up to three minutes. Aaron Gross Hastings. As I am on the eve of the funeral of my departed mother, I question my own motives for why I'm even here talking to this board. I don't feel like being here at all, as I would have better luck talking to a wall sometimes, because at least I know how to fix a wall. I do not know what can be said to fix the direction of this board. Citizens aggrieved from all over this county have pleaded with you, and you do little to nothing to hear those pleas. I have pleaded with you and attempted to reason with you with facts, writings, stories and ideas still I feel ignored you say one thing and do another you tell me county government moves slow yet when it's something you want it seems to happen really fast I asked for night meetings so that 85 percent of the working adults that I researched 85 percent of the working adults work during the daytime during the daytime I asked for a night meeting but I get little, little to no action on that. It's very frustrating. You talk about the use of the ARC, ARPA fund not being decided in smoke-filled back rooms, and yet there, is there any community involvement? Very little. Are there any night meetings on that, any night forums? Not that I've seen. Have you asked any of our opinions, people that show up to these meetings? No. Are you just going off what the usual suspects say? I think so. Based on the recommendations that I've heard, the ARPA funds will only affect about 10% of this county. That's spending six million, that's half of it, to my understanding. Any nighttime forms on this to ask what, might be, what the funds might be used for? No. I do remember a Republican meeting that was scheduled to coincide with a grassroots forum meeting. How convenient. I'm still waiting on those night meetings, Ben. I'm still waiting. You know, the ones that I asked for and we talked about when I dropped those charges against you for violating my rights. I seem to remember that you and Vivian were more concerned about the few employees that it takes to put a meeting on at night. 85% of working adults. I shudder to think about what this county has become. It feels like it's become of the county, by the county, and for the county. Who do you really represent? Based on your actions, I can only conclude that you do not care about what your constituents say. Because if you did, you would take heed. And P.S. John Smelker, thank you for listening and trying to represent the people of this county. 
Thank you. Is there further public comment? Hello, Charles Hertzlers of Hastings City. Well, thank you guys for allowing me to come up here and speak today. And basically what I want to talk about is this ARPA fund money. All right. This money is actually only going to represent less than 10% of the people in Barry County. And a lot of the items that's on there, like he says, we know nothing about. We have no insight or input. I asked last week, hopefully you guys would have open meetings like we did with the jail where we can all come in and listen, ask questions, whatever. But basically, evil begets evil. And this money is evil. It was taken from the taxpayers and given to us. And so our children and everybody else have to take. It's not free money. Nothing is free. And I would think that if we were a, really a community of upstanding people and stuff, we would do like so many counties in Michigan have already done and send that money back. We don't need it. This, company, this county has been surviving without that money. Why do we need this $6 million of blood money, bribery money, whatever you want to call it, now that we gave you this money, you got to do this for us. That's not right. That's our taxpayer money to begin with from the federal taxes. And I really think we need to send it back and tell them to stick it. We don't need it. Let's be a county that's outstanding and, and stay. We can get by. We will survive. We have up until now. I know that things are tight, but I'm still thinking that taking this blood money is only going to make things worse. More division in this county. These people are going to be mad because they didn't get any. These people are going to be mad because they didn't. You're just going to cause more rift because somebody's got to decide how to spend this money. Send it back. We don't need it. That's my honest opinion about this. I'm not going to sit here and kick the can anymore about the, uh, the Colette scripture and the whole thing over there because like that, this, nothing's happening. You know, like he says, come up here and talk. You hear people talk. 500 people show up at a meeting over there and nothing happens. You know, hopefully, hopefully this is a decision that you guys can make together to say, state, we don't want this money. Federal government, we don't want this money. Send it back. Why cause more division in this county against the people of the county? It doesn't make any sense. I don't see any good coming from this money. I really don't because it's not free money. Somebody's going to pay it back. And the government's already almost as broke as what this county is, I guess. I don't know. I know the government's in bad shape. I don't know the, how good the county is, but do we really need to take that money? Is it that desperate that we take that money? I'm just hoping you guys think about it. And I really do hope that you have the open meetings where people can ask questions like the scoring system. I still don't understand the scoring system. I, I don't, there's a lot of it I don't understand, but I think that it needs to be open meetings to the general public so everybody can have an involvement in it. Thank you. My time's almost up. Thank you. Is there further public comment? Michelle Peltier, Hastings City. I appreciate that you are all working on the ARPA projects and that you've identified things that will improve the infrastructure for the, for the future. It was good to see last week the projects that were listed and that you're investigating it and you're going to help the townships identify more. This money has already been dispersed from the federal government. To turn it back would be cutting off her nose to spite our face and I appreciate that you're looking at projects. Any improvement in this county is an improvement for everyone and there should not be resentment of one township or one city or municipality uh, does benefit from it because we will all benefit from the improvements in Barry County. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further public comment? Good morning, Jim Dell, Barry County Drain Commission. Um, you guys are receiving an email that we got from our legal uh, drain district council addressing the ARPA funds. Our office put in a request for ARPA funds for the Watson and Cloverdale drain projects. This money would be paid directly on the construction costs, which we believe follows the ARPA laws. Um, and then in turn, of course, would uh, lower the assessments for all people involved in this infrastructure project. Um, we are not allowed to adjust assessments for income levels or SEVs. It just uh, ain't part of the drain code. Um, though we applaud the ARPA fund committee's attempt to assist low-income property owners, 
in, the di in these districts, that was not the way in which we applied for funding. Please read the email and make a decision according to that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further public comment? Eldon Schellenberger, Carlton Township. I have a problem with this American Rescue Plan. Um, I see some issues here. Like I said, it's blood money, but I just recently seen on Julie Kelly's website where the, where the states agreed to pay for many things. And um, I know for years, Barry County 911, and uh, I'm not against it, but um, it's had issues with their tower because of how and where it was built in a low area. And I see that they want money to take, even though they're getting it from the state, they want uh, to build a, um, a tower. Well, why wasn't these towers put in a proper place to begin with so we don't have to take and overdo things three or four times? And also that, um, you know, that there was issues to begin with with 800 megahertz digital frequency, and then they went to the 700. Now the 700 is having an issue, so they're going back to the trunking to 800. My understanding is that uh, one of the interferences is coming from Canada. Um, my issue is if the state police of Michigan has their radio tower in Nagani uh, up in the Upper Peninsula, they run off repeaters. If they're not having an issue, why hasn't the engineering and the different part of that been addressed or looked into so we don't keep repeating and, and wasting money and spending money for radio frequency? Um, is there other towers? possibly that we could rent that would work a whole lot better than building a new tower system? Um, those are the questions that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further public comment? Touch my head. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Oh, you, you I was up first and you're closer. I'm just, I'm here, Jim Yarger, Irving Township, uh, Fire Chief Freeport, been fire service for 42 years. I just want to if you have questions about the radio system, come to those of us who use it, not the people that have never been on the radio, not the ones that put their life on the lines and have to use the system. I want to say the migration from 8 to 700 had nothing to do with the frequency didn't work. It had all about to do the FCC sold the 800 spectrum we were on. We had to migrate to 700. That's all been taken care of. Those people that bought the 800 spectrum paid for all that infrastructure to be updated. Now, as far as towers go and renting and where they should be, there's a lot of things that go into that. Um, we did get left out in the early stages of the 800 megahertz digital system, which is what the state is. We have a VHF system that the county fire runs on right now. We have a lot of interference problems with that. There's days. Not very many yet, but they keep getting worse that we can't get out on the VHF because the static's so bad. And when somebody's life's on the line, we'd like to get back to dispatch or the command. So if you, I just ask, if you have questions about the radio system, please come to those of us who know. Thank you. Thank you. Is there further public comment? <clears throat> Adam Heikola. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had mentioned some of my history so you guys understand why I come to you all and why I do what I do everywhere that I go. And it's about the, the experience that I had through a training of the Gamaliel Foundation. I asked you all to look that up. Did anybody actually, can I get a nod? Anybody actually look up who the Gamaliel Foundation is? A wink? Nothing? Okay. So the Gamaliel Foundation, again, that whole system of nonprofits and, and, and ultimately of power, all right, is why we're having people that are fighting over ARPA funds and why we even have ARPA funds being stripped from people, all of our money getting taken, trillions of dollars just being created, debt added. It's not even money taken from us, you guys. This is all debt being added to our grandkids and great-grandkids and great-great-grandkids until what? America's completely dissolved and destroyed because we don't have any money left, right? 
But this is socialism at work. This entire system of gatekeepers, of money being dispersed, is how socialism works. And we trick people to think that the people are in control and all these groups are in control. These, these, but they're power centers. Politics, this power system, deals with money and influence. Okay? That's what they tell you. National leadership training through the Gamaliel Foundation. They tell you the whole week is about power. And that power comes from influence over people and money. Those two things continue to work for each other. This is just politics. You understand? But they do it from a Marxist base and ideology. But guess what? That ideology is infiltrated into every single aspect of, of what you guys are doing here in this local community, whether you know it or not. It is what's happening. It is what's happening in the controls all the way from the top down in Washington down into this community. How do they have that control? It's through the nonprofit system of power, the gatekeepers of money and control and of influence over the minds of people in our world. So again, Gamaliel Foundation, G-A-M-A-L-I-E-L, -E look them up. Correspond to the different people that have been through their training and who they are in our world today, the levels of which they are controlling our world today. Because I don't think you all are bad people that, that want to continue any any paths of wrong going on in our world. I, w I know that you all have good hearts and want to see good in our communities. So, so please, heed these words. I'll share a little more on the next comment. Thank you, Ann. Is there further public comment? Good morning. Good morning. Stephanie Lehman, Yankee Springs Township Director with Barry County 911. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you commissioners and the ARPA committee for your um, extensive work and diligent time um, that's been spent on sorting through all these applications, determining what's appropriate for this, these allocations and not. I would love to be able to stand up here and educate everybody on um, the 1800 in, uh, megahertz infrastructure tower that we currently have sitting near the intersection of M79 and Swift Road in Barry County. But the fact of the matter is, I was not a decision maker for 911. I didn't even live in this community. I was in high school when those <laughs> when those decisions were created. And at the time, the state, the Michigan Public Safety Communication System, was responsible for the infrastructure build out. So Barry County was fortunate enough to receive one tower, and the state is no longer building infrastructure. The number of first responders that we have utilizing the system has quadrupled since about 1998. The system has a limited amount of capability, and at this time, our system is overloaded. As a local unit of government, as a municipality, we don't have a choice but to try to meet and to accommodate the need in today's public safety market. And unfortunately, we're just not quite there. Historically, 911, um, through our millage, has been able to provide that infrastructure. Unfortunately, the cost of this infrastructure does not allow us to do that. The cost of one site exceeds our annual budget for one year. So we presently have one tower. All of the studies show that we probably need to have between six or seven, depending upon how those towers are engineered. And I can share in the sentiment that Mr. Yarger shared with you earlier is if you only have one chance, you're in a basement, you're in a house that's collapsing because you're fighting fire, or you're a law enforcement officer that is fighting with someone for their life, or you're an EMS, you're some form of EMS personnel and you're transporting a patient that's fighting with you and you have one opportunity to get out and that system is overloaded and you miss your opportunity and we are at 911 are not able to meet the needs of our first responders, I think it's pretty hard to put a dollar amount on what that means to all of us. Um, this was a joint application between 911 and emergency management. I do have letters of support from every law enforcement agency in this county, as along with medical control and EMS council and the Barry County Fire Association, which represents all of the fire agencies. I would be willing to participate in any meeting to educate and answer any questions. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Is there further public comment? Hearing none, we'll move ahead. 
Bears correspondence. Does any commissioner have correspondence to share with the board? Consent items. Commissioner Smelker. I move for the following consent items. Approval of October 26, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting minutes. Approval of November 2nd, 2021 Committee of the Whole meeting minutes. Approval of the fiscal year 2022 Grant contracts for adult drug court, sobriety court, and swift and sure sanctions probation program and authorized chairperson Ben Geiger to sign via document sign. Uh, approval to spend $5,065 from the animal shelter donation fund for the purchase of a pre-made barn. Approval of the 2022 proposed Berry County health plans for Berry County employees as recommended by the Berry County Health Care Cost Containment Committee. Approval of Budget Amendment 21-D. Approval to add a new full-time detective deputy <coughs> position. Approval of the attached revised position description for payroll and human service specialist, human resource specialist and to reassign the function of payroll and benefits administration from the county clerk's office to the county administration office. Second. Motion by Smelker, support by Gibson to approve the items listed under the consent agenda. Discussion is not allowed and the roll call vote is required. All those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk will call the roll. Campbell. Aye. Connor. Aye. Getty. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Smelker? Aye. Geiger? Aye. The consent agenda is approved. Presentations, we have none. Public hearings, we have none. Items for consideration. Uh, I move the items for consideration. A, approval of prepaid invoices in the amount of $12,610,997.25. B, approval of claims in the amount of $88,959.47. C, approval of commissioner reimbursement mileage in the amount of $259.45. That's good. Oh, I'm sorry. Bruce is a fiscal conservative, so it's only natural to, <laughs> for him to shave $12 million off of something. <laughs> Motion by Campbell supported by Smelker for the approval of transfers and disbursements, approval of prepaid invoices to the amount of $12,610,997.10, approval of claims in the amount of $88,959.47, and approval of commissioner reimbursements mileage in the amount of $259.45 is their discussion. Hearing none, the clerk call the roll. Connor. Aye. Getty. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Smoker? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Geiger? Aye. The items approved. I move for the adoption of resolution number 2123 to approve the new master agreement 2022-0013 between the Michigan Department of Transportation and the Barry County Board of Commissioners and to authorize Transit Director William Voigt to enter into and execute all such project authorizations with the Michigan Department of Transportation. Second. Motion by Campbell, supported by Gibson, for to adopt resolution 2123, a resolution to adopt a new master agreement 2022-0013 between the Michigan Department of Transportation and the Barry County Board of Commissioners and to authorize the Transit Director, William Voigt, to enter into and execute all such project authorizations with the Michigan Department of Transportation. Is there discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Getty. Aye. Gibson? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Smelker? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Connor? Aye. Geiger? Aye. The resolution is adopted. Move for the adoption of resolution number 21-24 to authorize Transit Director William Voigt to execute Master Agreement 2022-0013 on behalf of the Berry County Board of Commissioners. Report. 
Motion by Campbell, supported by Smelker, for the adoption of Resolution 2124 to authorize Transit Director William Voigt to execute Master Agreement 2022-0013 on behalf of the Barry County Board of Commissioners. Is there discussion? Hearing none, the clerk call the roll. Gibson. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Smelker. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Connor. Aye. Getty. Aye. Geiger. Aye. The resolution is adopted. Unfinished business, we have none. New business, establish an ARPA project approval timeline. For the reasons that were pretty much said in public comment, we are having this on the agenda today to talk about um, how we can um, best move these projects forward and have the discussion the public is owed um, before we spend uh, the people's money. I did not put a proposal on um, today's agenda because I wanted the board to discuss it. The sheer amount of money is unprecedented in our appropriations. Or it's very rare we write million dollar checks. So I do think we need to take these projects individually um, out of respect for the tax dollars um, and the taxpayers. But in terms of public forums and public meetings, I, I wanted us to, to talk about it. So ready, set, go. Catherine. Um, I think the um, the the excessive research that the, the group put in to it, I think that it would be fair to hear their um, scoring system and the rationale that went behind that, because I think it was, um, it was, it was thought out um, in terms of what our federal reporting um, process would be and how we would report that and justify the expenditures. So I'd like to hear how they come up with a scoring system um, and and how that you know in turn evaluated the applications that came in I think that will shed a lot of light on the on the recommendations so you're saying in addition to explaining the projects to the citizens we should have some discussion on the board's met or the task force process okay that's a good idea um, Dave my thought was Although we're familiar with them, as Catherine pointed out, we don't know all of the conversations that went in on that committee. They did a great job from what I can see on the outside, but I think if we look at the next BOC in December or the first BOC, the next BOC in November or the first BOC in December, if we could schedule a workshop after the BOC to have them here where we could actually have some engagement, some question and answer, and ask them about individual projects. Talk about the scoring. Take a look at the whole thing that's in a public forum. People who have concerns can participate in that as well and ask questions. And uh, I think it'll help guide us as far as priority projects, maybe things that need, need to be acted on immediately, and things that maybe we can tap the brakes on and put some more thought into going down the road. But um, you know, just the thought that after a BOC, they're typically shorter than the cows. We could schedule them in and have as many of those board members as possible participate. Mm -hmm. John, you always have opinions. I agree. We need a, a public forum on this, and I think it would do our committee a disfavor if we didn't have them here to explain how they done and how they come up with their thing. It sounds like the core of this week is the task force. We need the task force people here. Mm -hmm. When do we want to have this forum? I, I'm, I think by the end of the year, before the end of the year, maybe. Um, I agree with the task force, but it might even also help to have the applicant here. Yeah. Not against that either. What about the fifth Tuesday? Of what month? Of November. November. Mm -hmm. The 30th. 
It's an open date, so. Fifth Tuesday of the member month. The mythical Fifth Tuesday. Well, my experience, um, commissioners will probably show up here by mistake anyway. <laughs> I take um, exception to that. November 30th. That, that's logical. What time of day? Same time. If we're doing it for the public, why not do it at night? Oh, I don't care. If we have the applicant, that's a very good point. The applicants are the ones that identified the project that went through the process mm -hmm. of submitting it. Mm -hmm. It's their, it's their project. And there's that, like there's very few meetings that fifth week of the month when it when it falls so, you know, conflicts with mm -hmm. other meetings, it shouldn't be there. Okay. This seven. Six. It's the last day of hunting season. It's the last day of deer season. Don't last push day of deer it, Catherine. Season, right? <laughs> what do you think? Um, I agree exactly with what Catherine said originally, and also that uh, I, I think for the benefit of the public and everybody involved in this massive amount of money, uh, an evening meeting would be in order. 6.30? But then, then that'll be, I'll be way out of the way. <laughs> It gives people you want to hunt, don't you? <laughs> it ain't going so good right now. So I'm letting you guys work this out. Six thirty. I mean, it gives people a chance to get home and have some dinner. You know, if you get out at five, you know, six thirty would be. I'm I'm right. I'm open. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't matter to me. It will Tidy be. Center. It will be a uh, a late meeting. Seven. I mean, seven's fine too. Seven. At I the like Titan. seven o'clock. Seven at the Titan Center. Michael, can you text Bonnie and see if she's available that day? Who, what do you think? I think it's a good idea. Where would you have this meeting? At the Titan Center. Uh, well, Titan can you or? check the Titan Center availability? Dave's, Dave's on it. Did you say the Titan Center? Who said the Titan yes. Center? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we're checking to see if somebody has it oh, reserved. Okay. I don't know how large this is going to be, but we could use Leaping Sharp, too. Well, could be pretty large. I mean, we've had a couple of people um, come up today uh, and advocate very strongly and passionately for projects, and they have a lot of public support behind them. So We talked have... about that last Wednesday, too, you and I. Yeah, and that, between the applicants and the task force, there's just a number of people right there. Huh? Maybe that. Sure Leaping Sharp, sharp may be a better Maybe idea. better. Well, in the past, when we didn't have the information of availability in front of us. Um, the board has just let me and Michael find a place. I'm fine with that. Yep. Okay. So on November 30th at seven o'clock, seven o'clock, we're going to have a public forum to discuss the recommendations from the ARPA task force. We're going to have an explanation of the methodology of scoring. We're going to give an opportunity to hear from the applicants. We're going to have an opportunity for the public to weigh in on these projects. Yeah. Unfortunately, the 29th, I'm due to have my cancer surgery. Can we do it so I could participate from like the hospital if I'm still there? I think you would be the first person in history to participate in a Barry County Board of Commissioners from the hospital. So yes. <laughs> I mean, and we, um, absolutely, if we have the ability to Zoom, we'll make that available. And and despite our differences, Chuck, God be with you. Thank you for the inspiration. Yeah, make sure I don't mistake. <laughs> All right. So um, November 30th, 7 o'clock p.m., um, a public forum that explain a public forum that allows the public to hear what the projects are, the reasoning behind it. Um, they're going to hear from the applicants if they want to come and support their proposal. And we're also going to hear from the ARPA task force on their methodology and their reasoning. What is the ultimate decision? Um, let me go back. Do we want to make a decision at this meeting? 
I think that should be made at a board of commissioners meeting. Historically, John, that's that's what we have done. Just my idea. <laughs> I think it would give us a little more time to digest what we hear at that meeting and mm -hmm. clear it in our head and stuff. So right. a future meeting would be good. Okay. So that's how we'll proceed. We will have the public forum on the 30th, and then in December we'll place the items for um, approval on the agenda. Does it go through a cow first? Yes. I think so. I, I'm going to challenge you on that. Why does it need to go through the, the cow first? I think we need to have the debate over what we hear. We're all going to have different notes, different okay. inputs, and I think it's worth having more discussion and more public input. Okay. I was just playing devil's advocate. Okay. So, forum, cow, BOC. If you're not going to have it through a cow, you might as well make the decision at night. All right. All right. Sounds good. Uh, after this meeting, um, I'll work with Luella and Michael. We'll f inform the um, the stakeholders of um, this process that we're going to do this, um, and they can share it um, with their constituents. Do you so stay tuned, Rebecca? We'll have some stuff for you, Vivian. Do you want to? Just post it, or did you want to put something in the paper? Or? Uh, we will put something in the paper. This is pretty big. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All right. If there's no objection, we're going to move forward um, as discussed. County Administrator's Report. Chairperson's report. I did attend the Maple Valley Board of Education meeting last night. They had sent the Board of Health a resolution with their concerns about health department decisions. Um, they were very appreciative of everything this board is doing, and they are in the same frustrating position that we are, um, having constituents that are demanding action, but not having the tools to respond because the state of Michigan has not given them. So we, um, good things are happening in Maple Valley. Vice Chair of Persons Report. Um, thank you. I attended the Orangeville Township meeting last week and their continue, just their normal business, but they continue to chip away at their list they have for their ARPA funds. They They're getting some uh, bids and looking into different things and possibility of how to spend that money and where their money will go the farthest. So they continue to chip away at their program. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner reports. We'll start with Commissioner Gibson. I attended the uh, city council meeting last night. They had several resolutions. Uh, Resolution 2021-41 establishment of a final assessment role for the parking in the city of Hastings, principal shopping district. Consider adoption of resolution 2021-42 to adopt city policy on reimbursement of review expenses and to require zoning escrow accounts for such purposes. Consider Mayor Tassa's appointment of Police Chief Dale Boulder to the Berry County Central Dispatch Administrative Board for a term from January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 3025. Consider approval of state mandated corrective action plan as presented. Consider purchase of a detective vehicle for $26,265 as requested by Police Chief Boulder. Consider a purchase of three additional fire hydrants for stock for $6,600 as recommended by Director of Public Services Tate. Consider Linda Robinson DVM request to allow pets into Bob King and stay the ordinance to allow pets into the park. Resolution 2021-43 on December the 11th, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon to support Green Gables Haven. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Jackson. Um, just at the beginning of the cycle, it'll be Barry Township tonight, Rutland Township tomorrow, and then a few more meetings. We have the animal shelter next week. So, Thank you. Commissioner Campbell. 
I did attend the Maple Grove Township. Uh, they too are working on ARPA as everyone is. And also their transfer station is at the top of their list over there. Lots of good things hopefully going to be happening in the future that's going to promote our recycling here in Barry County. Also attended Assyria. <coughs> um, they're working with the ARPA funds. Uh, there seems to be some confusion out there on their uh, take of it. I think I think that's true to be said everywhere, and they're still trying to muddle through all of the uh, process and figure out what they can use that on. Uh, they're also dealing with some drain issues out there. Uh, our commissioner was at the meeting and uh, enlightened them on many subjects pertaining to that draining. Also, I attended the conservation easement board. Uh, it's a huge scoring process getting somebody into the uh, cons conservation part of it and stuff and getting their land preserved uh, but we have narrowed it down to uh, one p applicant that will probably be awarded it but it has not been finalized yet thank you can you say what township they're in the the uh, property that looks like it's going to be in is in Assyria <clears throat> thank you Commissioner Getty uh, I attended the Village of Middleville um, meeting. They, um, they are in the process of reviewing five proposals for um, two allowed marijuana sites within the village. Um, as you can imagine, generating a lot of discussion. Um, last night, the Thornapple Kellogg School Board um, voted to close the middle school due to COVID outbreaks um, for the next three days, so Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, lots of kids out in the Thornbill Kellogg School District. Um, I've been working with the Yankee Springs um, board on getting them um, help with their questions that they have on the ARPA funding. Um, so there's, as we all know, there's lots of questions, but there is help available, so they've been reaching out to the ARPA committee um, with those. And I think they're going to attend their meeting this week. Um, Thornapple Township meeting was last night. Um, they voted to spend over $5,000 that has been um, raised through fundraising and an individual anonymous donation for Swift Water Rescue equipment. Um, they've been going through Swift Water Rescue training um, with the emergency services, and it will make um, the river safer. In, in our Middleville area, at least in the, in the Thornapple um, Emergency Services District. Um, yeah, we have had a lot of tubers and kayakers that, that needed emergency assistance. Yeah, and they need the equipment to mm -hmm. do that. Right. Um, and then uh, COVID is spreading quickly. Um, I've been contacted several times with close contacts. If um, and that's why I'm wearing a mask today. If you get contacted, even if you've been vaccinated, please wear a mask. Um, and there are lots of testing, free testing available. So if you are showing symptoms, please get tested. Um, if you're positive, please get treatment. The treatment is very effective. Mm -hmm. We don't want to lose any more of our residents. Um, back to the marijuana item. So the village of Middleville has approved it has approved having dispensaries Correct. in the village, right? What other local governments have approved it in Barry County? Has Rutland approved it? Okay, Rutland. We're in process. In the process. We have a dispensary in Baltimore. In Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Baltimore. So the village of Middleville, Rutland, and Baltimore. Is there anybody else? The Castle and Township turned it down. And they're talking about five in the village. No, they're talking about two sites. They have five applicants they're reviewing. Oh, that's how it works. So you. So they have, they have five proposed sites, and then they go through the review process and the business certification, I guess, is mm -hmm. the second phase of that. Has the city talked about it? They talked about it last night, who? Oh, yeah. All right. And last but not least, Commissioner Smelker. Uh, my meetings start in, in the next week, but uh, I do want to emphasize the testing. And uh, National Guard is putting it on up at the Health Department Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, 10.30 to 3.30, I think. 
and it's from now until December 1st, I think. That's all I got. Thank you. Commissioner Connor. I, I forgot to share uh, the planning and zoning met last night and we deliberated over the applicants that we had at the meeting. Well, that's um, what you're supposed to do. Yep, and we came up, <laughs> we came up with the first choice and a second choice, uh, McKenna, and then was the first, and Roe was the second. Mm -hmm. So Jim will be reaching out to those applicants to, and hopefully we'll get that process started for the master plan. So you January. whittled it down to two from four. Mm -hmm. Okay. We wanted a second choice just in case something right. changed since um, you know they sent their application in. Mm -hmm. So um, Commissioner Connor's talking about the uh, master plan, mm -hmm. which is a really important document when it comes to planning and zoning and the <clears throat> land use ordinances in Barry County. And the law says we have to update it every 10 years. And it's not just like updating board minutes. It's like re writing your zoning law. So it's a really big process. And that's why I put Vivian on the board the planning commission <laughs> so I would, wouldn't have the work there's no a lot of public engagement a there's lot a lot of, of public engagement it's a very important document and I'm glad the process is moving forward anything else from commissioners hearing none we'll move ahead limited public comment this time any member of the public wishing to address the board may do so for up to three minutes hello again Charles Hertzler City Hastings First of all, thank you for making this ARPA thing public. I greatly appreciate that. And thank you for letting me kind of interrupt your meeting and ask about this. I, I really I'm not a terrible guy. <laughs> well, most of the time. <laughs> we all have our faults, Ben. So do I. Okay? <laughs> start over. <laughs> <laughs> no. Every day. Every day. Start over. So anyways, I did want to make this comment here. I was at the city commissioner's meeting last night along with him. And I was made aware of the fact that they have a restructuring program that they have to have approved and sent in the state within the next six days because they're on the verge of bankruptcy and the city of Hastings is about to be taken over by the state. I did not know if you guys were aware of that this or not. True. This is true. So I thought that maybe this ought to be, I know there's nothing you guys can do possibly because you're county commissioners, but I didn't know if people were aware of that fact or not because I certainly wasn't until last night at the meeting. And that's why they have that thing in there about the restructuring. They have to have it done within six days. That's pretty serious, don't you think? <laughs> but that's all. And I just want to thank you again for letting me speak in your meeting. I appreciate that. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there further public comment? Adam? <laughs> Is there anyone else? <laughs> I was tempted to close it. <laughs> no. um, so yeah, what he's talking about is correct. Uh, you know, uh, we have issues within majority of our local communities. Um, you know, the city of Flint was taken over by a manager because of their debt and their burdens that they had, their obligations that they had, that they didn't have a board like yourself that made the hard decision to cut off the bleeding, right? Um, why that is, I don't know. I, I mean, I know it's hard to make those decisions when there's people in your community that you have to remove benefits from or things of that nature. Um, I hope that's not the case and things are being hidden here in Barry County. I know Calhoun County, I know that their debt requirements for uh, their retirees and their benefits is astronomical and they can't afford it and they're all in the same situation. This is a common thing. This is a common thing because we've been forced upon the socialist system so that we cannot be independent communities any longer. That's why I've been here doing what I'm saying. Um, a lot of this too is why. You know, we, we had someone mention about cutting off our nose to spite our face. <laughs> What about the sacrifice that we're doing for this? We are literally sacrificing lives, blood. Our blood is being taken over by these shots. Do you guys not, not, not get that? This is a blood sacrifice. So when they say this is blood money, it's 100% blood money. All of this is happening because of this this disease they say there is that's 
We've got less than 1% of effect, the majority of us in this room, and our kids especially, but now they're forcing it down upon our children. So this is a blood sacrifice and blood money. And, and, and we need a group like yourselves to stand up against this in the nation. In the entire nation, we need one group in a county somewhere to stand up right now with a loud voice. And I believe that you all could be that voice. You guys have support like no one else has seen in the country from your constituents. You have support to fight against all of this here in this community. That's why I come and I'm here and not in my community like it's voting. I have a stake here because I have a business that I want to succeed. But that won't happen if we, if we continue to go on the same path that we've been on for so long. That we all now, the residents see this now. And they're here telling you guys that they support you in fighting against this and learning how we can do it. I found that my community doesn't have the basic planning to pay for all these things. Well, what I'm hearing is the same things that my community has done repeatedly just to say, well, we've got to get more money from you in some way because we haven't planned to figure out how to fix these things. So, so keep that in mind in all of this. And thank you for doing the, the public forum. I look forward to that. I think it's going to be an awesome opportunity for you all to see once again the support in this community for you guys to do the right thing. Okay. Thank you. Is there further public comment? Hearing none, we'll move ahead. There's no other business. Um, we've reached the end of our agenda. If there's no objection, the board will now adjourn.